I think every good movie starts with a great story. All of those classic movies that we all grew up with. Hey, hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. Our story doesn't start in the Garland Theater. It starts in a small print shop next door with a man who won't let go of the past. For the most part, I try to capture people's memories uh, with local Spokane icons and different places. And we put them on shirts and put them on art and everything like that. Bars, hotels, restaurants, and businesses long ago closed are now immortalized on the walls of Chris Bovey's store. We're kind of in the nostalgia business. 10 years ago, vintage print was just a side project run out of his kitchen. I was working a full-time job as the art director for the Inlander. But when demand for his work began to grow, Chris was left with a difficult choice. I either had to quit doing art or I had to quit the Inlander, so I just took a leap of faith. From hand delivering his prints one by one to opening a brick and mortar store in the Garland District. This is a neighborhood that seems like kind of frozen in time, you know what I'm saying? With all the neon and the theater and everything like that. And one of my first jobs was at the Garland Theater. Earlier this year, the owner of the historic theater next door, who by chance was also Chris's landlord, let him know some bad news. She was gonna close the theater for good. It's just in such a dire financial state right now. Throughout its 78 year lifespan, the Garland had always found a way to survive, outlasting the vaudeville theaters, the drive-ins, the multiplexes, but now, in the streaming era, after barely making it through COVID, it was in danger of shutting down entirely. Personally, I couldn't see myself lose that or I couldn't see Spokane losing that gem. And I don't want it to be just one of my posters. You know what I'm saying? Since 1988, when it converted to a dollar theater, the Garland has consistently kept ticket prices low, aside from one small exception, when admission is free. At 9.30 a.m. on summer weekdays, the theater opens its doors to hundreds of children. I think it's the heart and soul of not only the neighborhood, but the city, in my opinion. But if it goes down, like, all of these businesses will be affected by it. With my son's help, we put together a video. I need your help, Spokane. I just tried to speak from the heart, communicate what I love about the theater. So what do you think? In the world of my creation. Are you in? Alongside the video, Chris started a GoFundMe page and quickly raised over $45,000 from hundreds of other people with love for the old theater. And then another $45,000 in a matching grant from the state. But more importantly, because of the campaign, he met Tyler, someone else with trouble letting go of the past. Watching things that you care about be thrown away, it's like, well, if nobody else is going to save it, maybe that's my job. Tyler Arnold started rescuing arcade machines about 15 years ago. Eight years ago, he bought an old building with the hopes of opening an arcade. The city said if you want to use that building for anything other than a house, it has to be a church. So we went, yeah, we can make that work. <laughs> and when the arcade church got too big, he moved into an old Thai restaurant with twice the space. Currently we're running 105 arcades and about 50 pinball machines. Last year, Tyler quit his tattoo job to focus entirely on running the Jedi Alliance. It's a bizarre, yet familiar story. You know, I realize I'm in the nostalgia business, he's in the nostalgia business. Two like-minded individuals sharing one philosophy, that some things are worth passing on to the next generation. So we finally connected and it was just like, you know, like Step Brothers. It's kind of like the movie Step Brothers, if you've seen that. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. We would say the same idea and be like, dude, that's what I was thinking that. And he's like, I was thinking that and be like, did we just become best friends? Yep. He says he also has this love for the theater and doesn't want to see it die. Everything is in danger of becoming a strip mall. And it's a very sterile environment and sterile environments are very boring to me. There's nothing wrong with an old building. And the Garland to me is, I mean, movies are one of my biggest escapes and one thing I love probably the most in life. Something evident from the lines tattooed on his fingers to his massive poster collection, to his museum of movie props and costumes 
above the arcade. I feel like I've been training my entire life for this. I've seen hundreds of thousands of movies. He has this affinity for movies, and especially weird movies, old movies, that I don't necessarily have. But Chris brings something else to the table. His work in vintage print has made him one of the most sought after artists in Spokane, with images and murals painted throughout the city. Now, he has an entire theater as a canvas and a chance to put his other passion to use, restoring old neon. This is such a unique theater that they had neon on the inside and not just on the outside on the marquees, which got added later. You could make the same exact popcorn, drink the same soda, eat the same candy at home, but somehow it just tastes better being in this environment. I totally agree. It's another weekday morning, and before the children file in, the future creative director is sitting next to the future general manager talking about what else? Movies. And that's where that term comes from, the, blo the blockbuster. Oh. To be able to team up with someone who, you know, completely sees the future for this theater and wants it to last forever, you know, it is pretty exciting to me. In Spokane. We're going to go on this crazy journey together, you know. Brandon T. Jones. We'll see what happens. Crim 2 News.